Today's show is brought to you by Fiverr.com. That's the word five with two R's after it, dot com. Fiverr is a site for freelance work. You can hire freelancers to do a variety of things for you. You can be a freelancer on it as well and experiment with the site to see whether what you want to be doing professionally outside of the rat race, outside of your full-time job, is viable. It's basically a site where they'll do the billing and collection for you and pay you it once they've received the money. In addition, if you want to hire people like I do for book editing, transcriptions and such, very inexpensive. And I've had very good work for me. So again, it's Fiverr.com. You can use the link in the show notes. Frankly, you'll get a good deal from it if you do that. Now, let's get going. This is No BS Job Search Advice Radio, episode 2136. I'm your host, Jeff Alpin, the Big Game Hunter, and welcome to another day. Woohoo! It's a lot better than the alternatives, trust me, folks. As I've gotten older, I've grown to appreciate life that much more. Today, we've got a show where I interviewed Bill Priestley. I did this in two parts, and we're talking about having the life that you want having a purposeful life, and how to go about figuring it out for yourself. Hope you enjoy it. And again, part two is going to be tomorrow, and we'll be back in just one moment. As you know, I'm a big believer in professional branding. And Anchor makes podcasts as a branding tool very, very easy. It's free! And here what you can do is you can record something offline and upload it. You can record something on your phone and deliver it to them. They handle it from there. You can even make money with advertising on your show. Let me also say that they make distribution to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, like nine or ten different services. Very, very easy. So if you're interested in exploring podcasting or you have an existing podcast of your own, move it over to Anchor. Start a podcast here. You won't regret it. So my guest today is Bill Priestley, the owner of the Dream Job Factory, a coaching business geared around focusing dreams into careers. Using the Dream Job Blueprint, Bill helps individuals from high school age to retirement figure out that age-old question, what do you want to do with your life? He's spoken to high school and college students about identifying dream jobs and coaches, mid-career professionals interested in a career change. And he's also the author of the Dream Job Blueprint ebook and online course. Bill, how the heck are you? Welcome. Doing well. Thanks for having me, Jeff. My pleasure. So you and I both know most people are clueless about finding a job, let alone figuring out you know, how to find a fulfilling professional life. I would just suggest people start when they're saying to themselves, I'm miserable. I'm not, I'm not happy with what I'm doing. You know, all the people who went to law school and suddenly discovered they didn't want to be lawyers. Yeah. A whole bunch more. Where do they start? Sure. Well, I, I think it's important to start with uh, the fact that it's not, we're not looking for one thing. For instance, you know, you'll know, you hear a lot of people say things to the effect of, uh, well, music is my passion or sports is my passion or business is my passion. And they look at that in terms of one thing. And I think that's the true misconception of what it is when you're starting to look for something. And you're not looking for one thing out there. Uh, because let's let's say, for instance, I, I was doing this with a with a football coach one time, and I said, you know, you know, football isn't your passion, because I bet I can find more than one thing about the football industry that you not only dislike but perhaps completely hate, uh, and would never ever want to do. For instance, field maintenance. I mean, it's part of the football industry, but you got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. Uh, marketing is, is absolutely part of the football industry, but you, but you don't want to do that, do you? And they said, no, I don't want to do that. I said, coach, is that what you want to do? Yes. I want to coach football. Okay. So we have to get a, a little bit more, 
uh, streamlined in terms of our effect of what we want to do. So we have a, we have an interest there in, in football. We have an ability there in coaching. And now we got to talk about who do you want to coach? Are we talking about uh, high school? Are we talking about college? Are we talking about pro? Are we talking about big city, small town, division one, division three, all of those things. So when you start this incredible journey about trying to figure out what you want to do with your life, you're not looking for one thing. I think you're looking for three. Three? Like what? Yeah. Three things. Are we, should we stick with the football coach metaphor here? Uh, sure. And, and we use that example? Great. So yeah. in, the, in the case of the coach, what sort of three things should they be looking for? Well, if that's, if, if that's what they're, what, if you identify a passion around those three things, you're looking for a, an interest, something that you are really intellectually interested in, something that stimulates you intellectually, something you can talk about for hours on end and not get bored. And believe me, football coaches can talk about football for hours on end and not get bored. It's just amazing how much they can actually talk about the game. Um, but then past that, what is it that you want to do within that industry? And of course, there are many things that you can do within the football industry. Of course, you can coach, you can play, you can uh, market, you can be sports information, you can be an athletic trainer, you can be a referee, you can be an administration. All of those things are connected to the game in some way, shape, or form. So what is it that you want to do within the context of that industry? And then, like I said before, then you're looking for, okay, what, who is the person that I really want to work for? And that is different depending on what the, what that job is. So say for instance, if we're talking about an athletic trainer, an athletic trainer is working for the players. A football coach is working for the players. Uh, a, an administrator perhaps is maybe looking at more of the bottom line. Maybe they're looking at marketing. Maybe they're looking at ticket sales. Maybe they're looking at uh, win loss percentage. Are they're looking at a more big picture type of thing? That's the, that's the entity that they're necessarily working for in that particular respect. So uh, like I said, when you're looking for that, that the, the three things you're looking for an interest, you're looking, which in this case is football, you're looking for a, an ability in this case is coaching and you're looking for an audience. Uh, in other words, the person, the, the idea, the person that you want to be working with or working for, and say, for instance, even if you take that down to the player, the player, you'll notice, you, you can see this as well. If you follow football on a wider scale, you know, the, the college game is geared around the team. The professional game off season is geared around the individual. For instance, we're always talking about uh, the draft or trades or things like that. But um, the football player at least at the collegiate level, is thinking about their, their teammates. They want to help the team. Generally speaking, the teams that go on and win the Super Bowls, you can see this with the Patriots and other dynasties that have happened, they're in it for the team. The, the nucleus stays together. Like, you know, in baseball, the big red machine stayed together and had all those great years with Johnny Bench and Joe Morgan and, and, and all those guys. So they're playing for the team. You don't want to be on a team where everyone's playing for themselves. You don't want to be on a team where someone says like Keyshawn Johnson did many, many years ago, give me the g ball, you know, uh, that kind of thing. There was so, an extra word in there. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I made sure I bleeped it out, but, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's the, that's the entity that you want to be working for someone because that's also the essence of the job. Uh, you, your job would not exist if you don't do it for someone else, right? So, you are so serving got, someone else. It's got interest. Mm hmm we have to find specificity. And what was the third one? One more time. You have to find, you have to have an interest. You have to have an ability. Ability. So in other words, th 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 something that you do within the context of that interest. And then the audience, who is it that you want to work with or who is it that you want to work for? Got it. So let's use the example that I came up with earlier. I just graduated law school. I spent my first year working for a law firm. Oh God, this is awful. And they've spent their entire life focused on fulfilling their parents' wishes of being a lawyer. And that's the story for a lot of lawyers, of course. Mm -hmm. So they've been so focused, they don't have a clue about what really interests them. So they think. Mm -hmm. How do we help them get that clue? What sort of work goes in at the front end to identify 
the areas of interest? Well, the the areas of interest really essentially boil themselves down to what is it that drives you intellectually? Uh, when you're talking about an interest, you're talking about something that, by definition, keeps your attention. You know, it, you are interested in it. And there are so many different things and so many different ways that you can go about this as well. For instance, the obvious thing is something that you want to be interested in, like something that draws you to it, for instance, like football or sports or things that have those positive connotations on them that, that, you, that you kind of want to be involved with or things that draw you to them. Uh, and at least those are, they're, 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 would be the case with me. You also have different ways of going about it, whereas there are situations that you want to avoid. Uh, for instance, uh, you see a problem in the world that you would like to see go away. It's a bad thing, but it's got your interest because it keeps your attention. So say, for instance, if you're looking at you want to, uh, I know this isn't necessarily a dated uh, uh, reference, but if you want to get rid of AIDS in Africa, uh, that's a big, big interest. You know, if you, if, they, if you talk about that, if you, that always gets your attention when it comes up or you want to, you want to do something about um, racial inequality, or you want to do something about climate change, or you want to do something about, uh, you know, a host of any of any other issues that, that get your attention, then it gets your attention. Then you're interested in it. The, the next question is what can you do to affect that situation positively. Um, you know, another way kind of veering off of that is uh, answering the question, what are you scared of? Because Ooh, what scares you, I love that one. Because what scares you gets your attention. Guess what? If there's a snake in the room, and I'm petrified of snakes, but if there's a snake in the room, guess what? It's got my attention. Okay, that's that's going to happen. Uh, nothing else is going to matter at that particular point in time. So my next issue is, all right, how do I alleviate the situation? Same thing with, with whatever it is that, that anyone might be scared of. You know, if you've got kids, there's a lot in the world to be scared of uh, that you can help sort of alleviate. And that's, of course, a lot of companies are, are in that business of trying to make the world safer. So um, that's what we're talking about is finding something that gets your attention. That's the first thing that we want to go about doing when we're at a point where we think, oh, gosh, there's nothing out there for me. Well, yeah, there is. And there's more than you think there is uh, when you when you take a look at the world. That's and especially in the case in, in the case when you're talking about a lawyer, if we are talking about lawyers, you're talking about a person that has been through a lot of school, uh, a lot of training. They know probably a good bit about the world. And you'll notice that in the higher profile areas of administration, you'll often find lawyers, certainly in politics, certainly in, in high levels of, of corporations, you will find people who have maybe not necessarily passing the bar type uh, uh, lawyer, but you have people that have gone, they've gotten their MBA, they've, they've, they've done all that book work and, and they know a little bit more about the strategicness of what they have to do to make a company or an organization better. When I work with people, I start off by helping them identify what it is about what they're doing now they don't like yeah. and quantify that so that this way, as they start to examine other things, they can use that as a benchmark to determine what they don't want to be doing in the next role. Because mm -hmm. most people have, find it pretty easy to dismiss or reject or turn down. or They know the negatives real easily. The positive yeah. ones are harder. Mm -hmm. So I tend to start them off with, what don't you like about being a lawyer? Mm -hmm. uh, and from there, once they have that quantified and we start working on the interests, the things that float their boat, get them a little interested, I send them off on informational conversations with people who may be doing that kind of work. Sure. So sure. This way, that's, that's more towards the tail end of what I do. But yeah, definitely. Once you figure out those three things, then obviously talk to someone who's got the job and let's see, let's see if that really does flip your bill. And it's, it's funny. I'm so glad we're having this conversation because I do that earlier than you do. I'm going to be mm -hmm. curious to see what you do differently. Uh, so I send them off on informational conversations so they can hear the reality of what it's like to work in the profession, because mm -hmm. sometimes the lawyer recreates being a lawyer <laughs> by looking at being an accountant, for example. Yeah. You know, the same issues with repetitive work, um, you know, 
hellish schedules or what have you get involved in the next profession. So before they go off for additional training, I want them to understand what it is is really required, what the reality is. Sure. Now, you speak in terms of ability being the next thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious about that. Tell me how you, you help people identify their ability and what ability means to you uh, in the context of this transition. Right. So, okay. So the first thing is obviously in, in figuring out an interest, there's a binary relationship there. Either you like it or you don't like it. You, you, you can set a bar there as high as you want to. In other words, if we go down, if we create a list of, of interests, um, then we can say, all right, uh, on a scale of one to 10, pick out the ones that are an eight or higher. And that those are the ones that are going to cross the bar, essentially. Uh, when it comes to abilities, there are three different benchmarks that you have to pass in order to make this actually work. Number one, you've got to be able to do it. Obviously, if you want to, if you want to you know, do it as a career, you've got to be able to do it uh, in, 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 a, in the very plainest sense of the word. The, the, the benchmark that I would use is, can you do it well enough to get paid for it? In other words, you can ask me, Bill, do you play the piano? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I play the piano. I have an ability to play the piano, but nobody's going to pay me to play the piano, okay? So you've got that, that there, it's, first off. But um, there are others, obviously, out there that if you ask them the same question, they may be you know, classically trained and, and they have the ability to be paid for that there as well. So that's the first benchmark. The second benchmark is, um, do you want to do it? Say, for instance, we talked about football coaching or other aspects of the football industry. You know, field maintenance is something that football coaches don't want to do. Just They just don't want to do it. So the question there is, again, another binary situation. You have, do I want to do it? Do I not want to do it? And if you if you want to do it, then we continue on to can you do it for someone else? And 99 times out of 100, the answer to that question is yes, uh, unless you're unless you're talking about, say, for instance, television being your interest and watching it being your ability. Um, you know, that's that 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 doesn't feed anybody else necessarily. Uh, so so we're talking about doing it for someone else. Uh, to the point and doing it well enough to be paid. So that's, those are at least the three criteria of where we need to start. Now, how do we figure that out as far as the individual is concerned? Now we have to get into the hardest part, what I think the hardest part is of, of the entire process, which is basically self-discovery uh, in terms of figuring out. Because one of, the, the, one of the really interesting things about life that I think is, is intriguing is that we tend to think of ability as something that is difficult. Like if you, if I said you have an ability to do this, that means whatever it is that I think you can do, I think is difficult. It's difficult for me. However, you may think that it's easy because you can do it. You know, you, if you have a, if you have a problem where you have a plus B equals, and someone walks up to it and goes, well, the answer is C and they, they move on. Someone else approaches and goes, a plus B is banana and that's not right. And they're just guessing and who knows what's going on. And they'd say, well, that person got it. So they must have an ability to do this. Therefore, this must be hard. And the other person thinks, well, no, that's, that's easy. Everybody should be able to do that. So it's, it's, it's much tougher in that respect to try and figure out what we're good at because chances are we usually think of what we're good at as second knowledge. I mean, we, or, or as just, you know, common experience. You look at a problem, you go, oh, well, switch this to this and this to this and you're done, you know, and that's it. And, and we don't think twice about it. Whereas someone else may think that's really, really difficult. And you think, Oh, I can never do that. So now we have to figure out, we have to look at what comes to you easily. So that's today's show. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, here are a few things I can do to help you with your job search beyond simply being your coach. First of all, I've got a new book out called The Right Answers to Tough Interview Questions. It is like a cookbook with answers to tons of interview questions that you're going to be asked on interviews. And if you pair it up with my other new book, The Ultimate Job Interview Framework, they are a a terrific pair of books to help you with interviewing. In addition to a new service where you can practice mock interviews, if you go to the Big Game Hunter 
dot us forward slash mock. I've got a service there, very inexpensive, like $99, where we have mock interviews set up. I'm going to be adding more to it very soon, but you can record your answers to them and then I can critique them and help you perform better on them. You probably have noticed my show notes are pretty thorough with products and services that can help you with your search and connect with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash the big game hunter. Lastly, my website has a ton of great information. That's thebiggamehunter.us. Now, if you're not ready to go there and go through the blog, put the address in your phone, thebiggamehunter.us, Jeff Altman. So this way, when you're ready to go, you have a way of getting back to my website. Hope you have a terrific day. And most importantly, be great. (laughs) 